And we're reading from Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he, sh when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence all together. I want to talk a little bit about vulnerabilities and how in times like this, one may find themselves caught up in being vulnerable. Let us pray. Father God, we honor you and we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for the time that we're in, God, knowing that you're fully in control. And God, we give you praise, honor, and glory, God, for your manifested presence being in our lives, for you bringing us through this situation. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that's due your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. And as I was saying, we wanted to talk about vulnerabilities, and I began to look up the word vulnerability. It said the quality or state of being exposed to the possibilities of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. In our case, I believe that we could even go as far as saying spiritually. The one thing we've often talked about is that God has called for us to go forward. And God, even in the word that I read earlier, he stated that, you know, one plague more, and after that we will be let go. And I believe that looking upon the meaning of the word plague, uh, that it sends one blow, one more infliction from God. And, and as God puts it on the world that, that we as his people will be let go. You know, we have to realize that conditions change around us, but, but God, he's never changing. God is a unchanging God. And so he gives us a, a word of hope when he tells us that we will be troubled on every side, according to Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8 that we would be troubled on every side, but we wouldn't be distressed, perplexed, but not in despair. In other words, he's saying that times like this will come, but we can't be caught up simply because we are caught in those times. All right, in the second letter to the church at Corinth, he states in chapter 7, he says, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, but I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness to speak towards you. Great is my glory of you, I am filled with comfort. I'm exceeding joyful in all tribulation. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fighting, within were fears. Without meaning on the outside, there was fighting. But within our, within the people of God, there was this word called fear. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And now by his coming only, but not and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice no more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. But I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle has made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Sometimes we can get in a, a difficult situation and we don't realize that God is trying to reveal himself to us in that situation. It is funny how our ears are attuned to everything that's going on, as the governor say, as the president say, as, as, as the commissions say, and the mayors and, and, and the governmental authority speaks the ears are open but god has been speaking to us for years and it, it seems as though his word sometimes goes unheeded certainly it takes times like these for us to give ear and attention to god and i'm grateful that he's given us the opportunity to be able to hear him 
But I, I wanted to talk about vulnerabilities because I don't want you to lose sight of God simply because you're not in a building. God said, I don't dwell in a building made with man's hands. God let us know that, look, we're supposed to be in touch with him anyway, and our houses really should be our sanctuaries. And, and so he's given us the opportunity to go back to biblical things, to go back to things the way that he ordained them to be in. I'm excited that we have this opportunity. We, I'm not discomforted at all that we're not able to publicly gather right now. I believe that we still owe God the glory, and I believe that we still can give God the glory. And even after that, they didn't close the full door, because they said at least 10 of us could come out. But, but, but that's not what it's about right now. What it is about is what are you going to do with all of this time that God has given you to give him glory? Will you find yourself vulnerable? Will you become suspect in your own faith? Or will you prevail in the word that you know? For God has not given us the spirit of fear. And so we, we can't conjure up all this fear and then say it's of God. Well, we have to understand it when there is a move of God, that, 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 that God is in control. And when, when we realize that God is in control, somehow or another, we ought to find ourselves getting excited. Certainly, I'm excited for what God is doing. I'm excited for the time and the season that we're in. And I believe this, that, that God is still in control. I want you to study Psalms 105 for your own study and for your own time. And then I want you to look at Exodus chapter 7 and just begin to read about the ten plagues and, and realize that, look, God brings his people out of anything. And if you'll just lay hold of your faith and trust in God, that he will bring you out. And that's, I don't want to take up much of your time. I just want to touch bases with you to just share with you what God is saying. And so there is hope and I hope thou in God. And I, again, I just want to tell you thank you for an opportunity to allow me to pass through you. To, and I thank God for the opportunity in the season that we're in. To God be the glory. We give him praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.